Hi guys. So in this video, we will be continuing with the previous set of video, which we have already created on singleton design pattern. We have shown you like how to create a singleton design pattern in single threaded as well as in multi-threaded applications. Okay. So in this video, we will be discussing about how to break the singleton design pattern. So actually there is a way, there is not one way, there is uh, basically three ways to break the singleton design pattern. So we will be showing you here through code, like how we can break it and how we can rectify that issue as well. So let me sh uh, share my screen and let me show you how can we break the singleton design pattern. I hope you can see my screen now. So basically there are three ways of breaking the singleton design pattern. The first way is through reflection. Okay. So basically in constructor help of reflection, basically you can break the singleton design pattern. We will be showing you through the code log, like how can you break it? Then second way is through deserialization. Okay. So while doing the serialization means converting Java object into stream of bytes and storing it into database or file. That is a serialization process. And while doing the deserialization process, like converting those file data into back to Java objects during that deserialization process basically it changes the hash code of that entity value object value so that's why singleton property gets broken there so how can we rectify that that will be seeing and third way is through cloning okay with the help of clone method basically we can create the new instance out of it so basically you will be knowing like uh, clone is one of the method of the object class so with the help of clone method we create the new instance of the existing class so let's jump onto the code and see like how it is being worked I have created one instance over here of a singleton class. So basically if I go over here, I have created one singleton class, which is implementing serializable as well as clonable because we need to show with respect to cloning, like how with the help of cloning, we can create a new instance of the existing class. So for that purpose, we need to uh, implement clonable and serialization process, deserialization de process we need to show. For that sake, we need to implement serializable interface as well. Okay, so both have marker interface basically. So clonable is, uh, is basically a marker interface, serializable and clonable, both have marker interface because it doesn't contain any method within it and it provides a specific feature. Like if a class implement this uh, marker interface, that means it provides a specific functionality to the JVM. It, uh, it signifies like uh, with the help of serialization, we will be converting Java object into stream of bytes and then there should be a proper serial versioning. Okay. And then with the help of clonable, basically it provides information to JVM that we need to clone that particular instance class. So if you go see here, we have created private constructor of the class that we have already shown you. So we have to create a volatile keyword that also we have shown you double check locking concept that also we have shown you over here. Okay, so these things basically we have already shown you. So, uh, so here I'm showing you like how can you break it. So here, if you see, I've created already one hash code. Okay, I've created the instance. So we are not directly creating with the help of new keyword because it's a private constructor basically. So here, if you see with the help of get instance method, I've created the object of it and the hash code I've stored like instance one dot hash code. Okay, so this is the original hash code which was getting created. Okay. So now with the help of reflection, we will be trying to break it and we will be seeing like whether it's creating a new hash code or not. So with the help of reflection, we will be breaking it. So here you can see the implementation check for reflection. It is accepting singleton reference instance one throwing exception class. We have created one reference like reflection instance for checking whether that hash code is being changed or not. So for that testing purpose, we have created a new reference. Then there is a class like constructor classes there. Okay. Within that we have to pass the type, like which type you want to modify, like singleton class, you want to create the object of it. And then singleton dot class dot get declared constructor. So here you can see it is expecting type of certain class type parameters. Okay. And then it will return me of constructor type data. So it will return me a constructor object that reflects the specified constructor of the class. Okay. So basically it is being used for creating the new instance basically, and we'll be checking whether that instance is getting created or not. And we will be providing accessibility as well. So set accessible needs to be set as true. Okay. So here, if you go inside, so here it is a return type is void. That's why we are not storing it in a separate field value, not a variable. And then it is as it sets the accessible flag for this reflected object and it indicates like what you need to set like true or false. So if it is false set, which indicates that a reflected object should enforce checks for Java language access control when it is used. So basically with the help of accessibility, it is uh, providing access. Like if it is true, that means we can create a new instance for it.
Okay, if it is false that way, that means it will not allow you to create a new instance. So we need to break it, right? So we need to create a new instance. So we are setting the accessibility as true and set accessible as true means we are allowed to create a new instance. Okay, we are giving the rights to create a new instance. And then with that same constructor reference, we are creating new instance. And then with this reflection instance, we are calling the hash code method. Okay, so like this, we can break the reflection, okay? So now let's comment it out this one. We will be showing you step by step. So first let me show you for reflection. So let me run the code. So here if you can see the hash code gets changed. The original hash code was this and the new hash code is this which gets modified due to reflection. So now the question is like how can you resolve this issue? We need to solve this issue as well, right? So how can you resolve this issue? So basically what we have to do, we have to go inside this singleton class, okay, which you have created over here. So here actually it is allowing me to create an instance by accessibility as by setting accessible as true. So here we will be not, we will not be allowing it to create the instance. So what we have to do over here, we will be doing null check. So if reference is not equal to null, that means the reference has already been created and now you're trying to create a new reference again. So it will not allow now. So what I will do over here, we will be returning, sorry, we will be throwing new illegal state exception. Okay, and we can pass like objects are restricted. by reflection. Okay. So object creation, sorry, object creation, we can write object creation is restricted by reflection. So now what will happen? Now I have uh, restricted it. So now it will not create a new instance whenever this uh, reflection is being instantiated. So let me run the code again. So now you can see the hash code is changed. So now let me run it again. So now it, it has thrown me error, runtime error it is throwing. So here the original hash code is this. Now we are trying to modify that hash code. Okay. So now it has thrown me illegal state exception, like object creation is restricted by reflection. So it is not allowing me to create the new instance basically. So it is going inside that private constructor, but it is not allowing to create a new instance. So we have restricted instance creation basically. So that was with the help of reflection. So now we will be showing with the help of serialization and deserialization concept, like how with the help of deserialization, we can break the singleton property and how we can resolve that issue as well. So for serialization and deserialization, basically we will be uncommenting it over here and then we will be showing you here. So we, it is accepting singleton instance parameter basically and object output stream we have to use, we have to make use of that class first to uh, get the data. Like there should be a file and we have to provide a path of that file within object output stream class. And with that reference field basically we have to use to write the object into that. So object output stream dot write object basically we have to use, basically it's a void type and we have to store that reference like a singleton instance whatever is passed that we have to store it over here in the write object method. So this is the process of serialization basically. And while doing the deserialization, it is data has been stored into the TXT file now. Java object and all the files within it, all data within it is being stored as a serialization.txt data. So now during deserialization, what will happen? We have to convert those data which is being passed in the text format. We have to convert it back to Java object. That is basically deserialization concept. So during deserialization, basically we are uh, creating the object of object input stream because we are reading it object output stream because we are writing it and input stream because we are reading it. So we will be taking the input from the file. So we are passing the file data over here path with the file name and then with object input stream reference, we are passing the read object method basically. So read object will return me the reference of object type. So whatever the type of this singleton, we have to return that singleton. It's of singleton type only singleton is the class name. So we will be doing downcasting and then we will be uh, 
storing it in the singleton reference basically and with this reference we will be checking with this realization like whether this reference value is getting changed or not whether it is broken singleton is the new instance or the original instance that we will be checking over here so now we are checking with hash code okay so if hash code is different that means singleton property got broken while deserialization and if hash code is same that means it's not broken so let me check now to see like whether it's broken or not Okay, so let me remove that. I think it is uh, reflection is creating issue. So we will be checking one by one now. So let me run it again. Yeah, so here you can see the hash code value gets changed during deserialization. That means singleton property got broken because new instance is getting created. So how can we resolve this issue? Like with deserialization, new instance should not get created. Okay, so for that, what we have to do, we have to basically go over here singleton class and then within here we have to implement read resolve method so here you can see read resolve method i had commented so i need to uncomment it basically so here you can see we have to implement a read resolve method so there is a property like with the help of deserialization if we are using read resolve method implemented so it will return me object type data because it is of singleton type so it will return me singleton reference basically so after implementing read resolve type data, it will uh, make sure that during deserialization, it is not changing the reference. Okay, it will not changing the instance basically. It will return the existing instance. So ref, ref is the existing instance which is getting which was uh, getting created originally. So that same existing reference will get returned it from this read resolve method. So it will not try to create a new instance again. Okay, so basically, if you can see over here. It is the read resolve method. Okay, so where it is present, it is in uh, object class basically. So it's an object class method basically. So it is helpful to maintain the singleton property so that new object doesn't get created while deserialization. So let me uh, run it again. So now if you see the hash code values are coming same. That means singleton property has not been broken due to deserialization concept. I hope you got the concept till here. So two properties we have learned till now, like how to break it. First, with the help of singleton property, how we have broken it and how we have resolved. And second, with the help of deserialization, how we have broken the singleton property and how we have resolved. Now, third and last way to break the singleton is through cloning process. Okay, so let me comment it out this one. And let me uncomment the cloning part. So here, if you can see, I've implemented cloning part over here. So here, uh, the same instance which has been passed originally, singleton instance one, and we are creating the clone of it. Okay, we are creating the clone of it and we are checking the hash code of it. Okay, so we'll be checking like the cloned value of the existing instance is creating the same hash code or different hash code. If it is creating same hash code, that means it is not breaking the singleton property or else it's breaking. So let's check it once whether it's breaking or not. Yeah, it's breaking the singleton property. You can see the hash code value is getting changed over here. So now how can we resolve this problem? To resolve this problem, basically we have to override the clone method from the object class and then we have to return the existing reference or else you can throw clone not supported exception. There are two ways to resolve this issue. So if you come over here, here you can see I'm uh, creating the clone of it. So it creates the clone. So new object gets created. So instead of doing this, you can directly return the reference means existing reference, whatever was created before that existing reference will be returned back or else you can throw clone not supported exception over here. Okay, you can throw directly. If you are trying to clone it, it will directly throw exception like we have done with the help of reflection, right? How we resolve reflection issue. So two ways you can resolve this problem. So I will be showing you two ways. So let me come over here. I have returned the reference directly. So let me run it. So now you can see the hash code value is coming as same. So now with the help of cloning, it has not replicated the instance and created a new instance. So singleton property is not broken now. Okay, so what changes we did over here? So we did uh, returning the reference. We are not creating the clone. We are not calling the clone method and creating the new instance. So this is the way with the help of which we have stopped cloning the existing instance. And there's another way instead of returning 
you can throw throw new clone not supported exception and here you can pass the message cloning not allowed so now let's check it once run it again Yeah, you can see that is the original hash code and while uh, modifying the hash code while creating new instance, it is not allowing. It is throwing me clone not supported exception. Cloning is not allowed. So basically there are two ways to handle clone and there are two ways to handle private constructor uh, uh, breaking the singleton property as well. One with the help of reflection, like with the help of reflection, like we are creating if condition and we are throwing the exception from there, illegal state exception. Another way is through enum. So this is the homework for you. Try to uh, mod, uh, try to resolve this uh, reflection issue with the help of enum. Okay, that is the homework for you. And third way is through deserialization with the help of read resolve method we have implemented. And then we have resolved the issue of deserialization basically by returning the existing reference, which was already created before. So like this, we have solved the break uh, breaking of singleton design pattern and we have created a break free singleton design pattern code so this is very important in the interview actually interviewer asked this type of question like write me uh, means write a clear break free singleton design pattern in notepad plus plus so you should be practicing it a lot at least four or five times you should be practicing it on a daily basis at least so that uh, it comes to your mind certainly as soon as the question is thrown to you so this was it for this video. So this uh, past video and this video combined, now singleton is completed. Now in the next video, we will be going forward with the factory design pattern and abstract factory design pattern, those things. So see you in the next video with the next set of traditional design patterns. Till then, stay healthy, stay blessed. It's Dave Jitra signing off. Bye-bye.